Signore e signori, buonasera, benvenuti alla Casa Italiana Zerilli Marimò della New York University. Sono Stefano Albertini, sono il direttore della casa e probabilmente potrei anche continuare in italiano. How many of you, how many of you do not understand English? Don't be ashamed, there's always time. Do not understand Italian, sorry. Right. Okay, then we'll, we'll keep the English. Very good. Um, you hear a lot of Italian in the movie, it's basically bilingual, and every language is subtitled, so there are not going to be any problems for anybody. Uh, we are delighted to see this attention for this film. I just wanted to tell you that there are about 40 people that are about to see the film in our library on the second floor, so it's a huge turnout for us, so congratulations for that too. Um, yes, please, thank you. Uh, we have the fortune to have here with us tonight uh, to talk about the film immediately after uh, Brunella Fili, who is the director of Fili. Fili. No. Fili, con l'accento, with the accent. Fili. Grazie, Brunella. And Beth Di Santo, who is the executive producer. They're going to come back on the stage for the discussion at the end of the film. But there are a few interesting people. You're all very interesting. You're all beautiful. <laughs> but there are a few people in the audience that deserve to be called out and invited to stand to receive an applause when all of them have been presented. Brunella. Hello, everybody. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for coming because uh, for me, it's a real, really special screening tonight because, uh, as you told, the part of the film uh, was uh, shooted in New York City. And so, exactly three years ago, we were here shooting the documentary and now we are here showing it. So, it's uh, really, really amazing for me. And it's uh, double special because it's the first time that I see it with my executive producer, Beth, and of course the protagonist here, Alessia Gatti <laughs> and uh, Chiara Bernasconi and uh, there is also Matteo Rignanese and uh, maybe he's in the library so but uh, Stardust also in the library. <laughs> uh, after the, the film we are here so prepare your questions. <laughs> Thank you again very much. The film lasts about one hour and we will see you at the end for the panel discussion with Beth and Brunella. Enjoy it. And the executive producer of the documentary, Beth Di Santo. Allora, there are so many questions about this documentary. Well, first of all, congratulations. I know putting together a documentary that is beautifully shot, uh, beautifully edited, it's a lot of work. You said about three years in the making? Okay, so let's first start how the idea was born. When did Beth come on board? Maybe she wants to tell us that. And then we're going to talk about a little bit about what happened when you presented this documentary in Europe, because it has already had a very successful run and in festivals. Tell us something about that. Thank you very much uh, for being here. And um, so the idea, oh, how is born? Uh, um, I feel a, a, um, a kind of urgent uh, um, motivation to do this documentary because, of course, uh, it's about also about me, my generation, what the generation that the, someone called the lost generation. Just today, I was reading another article after you say almost three years at a time doing these researches that uh, says that the uh, situation has not really changed. So, so many Milano, young people. Where, do you live? where is your base? Uh, I live in Milano right now, but I am from Bari, the south of Italy. And uh, I emigrated in a certain way, but I stayed in Italy. And so um, I, at the, that time, I was uh, looking around me, and I was uh, I just graduated. And I see that uh, most of my friends were, uh, were going abroad to work. And uh, I was asking myself, what to do, me, if stay? Or I really 
um, did, didn't want to, to go abroad, but I want to discover if going abroad was really the emergency exit. How was life after doing this choice uh, and uh, if uh, they feel um, satisfied with this choice, completely satisfied, having uh, maybe a career after all the long education that we have in Italy. Uh, we are the most educated generation ever and uh, we are also the most unemployed. <laughs> it's it's an incredible uh, paradox. Uh, and so uh, this pushed me to, to start this research. And I started from my interviewing, uh, first of all, my friends. Uh, in fact, many of them are from Puglia. Uh, did you study cinema? Uh, yeah, so, so I study communication and then specialize in, ci in cinema in Bologna. Uh, in it <laughs> the, the, the field of cinema, of course, is most difficult than others, but um, so maybe I was just sure that uh, I wouldn't find uh, a fixed job. So for me, it's quite different. But many other friends and colleagues, uh, not only researchers, you know, people who study, but also people who want just a normal job to to see a future. You see in the documentary also Fisher, uh, <laughs> avoided uh, fish market. So in Italy is uh, not easy also to find a normal job, to have a, a prospective a future. Yeah, so back to the concept of normal job. Mm. But yeah. now I want to hear yeah. from Beth, who is uh, American, with an Italian last name, mm -hmm. how you became involved in the Okay. Um, yeah, I uh, my grandparents uh, were uh, emigrated from Italy in uh, early 1913. I think was was the year in particular. Um, but I come from a large Italian American family, and we are in, Italy. I, uh, in Calabria. And uh, so I've always had a fascination with Italy, and, and my parents and grandparents were very proud Italians, and instilled all of the you know, passion they had for, for Italy and us. And so I, um, at some point in my career, I decided to explore the idea of trying to perhaps open, I'm an attorney by trade, so I decided to try to go to Italy and open an office there. What a great idea. I can travel between New York and Italy and why wouldn't they welcome me with open arms? <laughs> but, well, come on. So um, it was um, really eye-opening because I, you know, in New York City, if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. Well, that's not true. <laughs> um, uh, not in Southern Italy, that's no. Uh -uh. So then I quickly realized not a business connection going to happen with Italy, but I definitely want to retire there. Maybe I can start different businesses. And I just kept running into the bureaucracy of trying to do anything. And it was really disappointing and disillusioning actually for me because I do have, my grandfather came here with a quarter in 1913 and here I am, what, nine, I mean it's 90 years later, but still I'm 43, went to law school, very successful. I mean, who could imagine the, that that would happen? So for me, it was sort of a personal, responsibility I felt to go back and try to you know start something there um, but sorry for the interruption so basically your story is the story of an American of Italian origin who takes an interest in her origins and somehow thinks of going back yes and at that point you understand that there is really no chance to go back but also that the people that are already there have to leave is that when you meet Yes, it was about the same time. Mm -hmm. It was, it was, I was two years into my retirement planning <laughs> when I realized the farm is not a dream, it's a nightmare. So I, <laughs> um, I saw an interview with Brunella, uh, she was on BBC, and I thought to myself, well, this is not only a personal story, it's a story about the young graduates who have no jobs, they can't start businesses like we have here startup community is, you know, start a business, you can do it. it, there's hope. And I thought the story was so compelling that you have all these kids that have wonderful education, I mean, so much great art and creativity and design comes out of Italy, how can they not have jobs? How can they not have a future? 
And so that's why I reached out to her and got involved in, in the project. Great. Tell us something, both of you, decide who does what, about the reception of this film in Europe, and in particular in Italy. This film calls home in a very peculiar way. Uh, how was it received? Uh, what were the reactions that you had in public viewings, but also in people that uh, watched it on their computer or on television? Well, um, in Italy, we showed it al uh, almost everywhere, everywhere in uh, festivals uh, and also in universities, uh, high schools, and uh, it was mm, really touching. And uh, they they welcome it also with a kind of shock, um, especially in, in the high school because they um, young people when they are studying they don't really mm, realize what is uh, after what <laughs> the graduations. Like me, I fortunately, of course, like me. They, they exit the university with full of hope and then they face this uh, reality. So the um, reaction uh, was very good. We won an um, award uh, and many people asked me, why don't you show it at the Italian parliament? <laughs> <laughs> Such <laughs> as, <laughs> like uh, it, it can change something. But I, I don't believe it. So we showed it at the European Parliament in Bruxelles, and uh, it was very, very who good. The screening? Who brokered the screening? Who organized it? A specific parliamentarian? A party group? No, yo young people who work uh, inside the European Parliament, Italian, because Italians abroad do a lot of things, like Bill Lemot said. They are very active and uh, attached to the, their own country also if they stay in abroad and they organize a lot of events to promote Italy and to make um, people aware of the situation in Italy. So maybe they in, in Bruxelles I was there to shoot the follow-up of the documentary because uh, we are doing also a web series that you can find online now inspired to the documentary with new stories and uh, new cities. So we shoot it in Bruxelles with them and they organized also a screening there with some politicians, but, but they don't, it. yeah, so they pass it and uh, <laughs> greet the young people, oh good, but you know. And so we, um, uh, here in the United States, I begin a tour. We have been uh, this month in uh, Detroit, St. Louis, Los Angeles. Yeah, this is the new, yeah, see the, I think this is uh, the, the, the right final uh, show. And so if you want to add something. Yeah, I think Brunella can speak to that uh, more than, more than um, I can, but she's done a fantastic job. I mean, no one is a better representative of, you know, the work ethic and passion than Brunella. So I, I'll but, let you. But <laughs> grazie, grazie. But I, I want to add uh, something about uh, Beth, that um, she's the first who trust this idea, <laughs> but really, in, in fact, because I, I was trying to, to search a producer in Italy, but uh, uh, was not really convinced. And I mean, I, I begin uh, the, the, this travel alone uh, with my just my cameras because uh, I, I didn't. I, I know I knew that uh, I don't find a, a producer. So when I received her email one day, just, she just wrote me an email. I want to find to fund your documentary to support your idea because uh, it's amazing. Please come to United States. To, to film also here, which I think <laughs> so, too. yeah, <laughs> a big, a big. So that, that that's what what we need in Italy. <coughs> Just people who believe in you and in your idea, because young young Italians are so so good, so educated. They have great ideas. Uh, we are creative, so, but. It seems that nobody cares re or really believe in them, uh, but with facts. <laughs> so what yeah. we are talking about this. Uh, and also, she said that she w would like to invest in Italy, and she can't. I think it's, it's incredible. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really disappointing. I mean, part of the reason when I was, became involved in the project, she was already very well far, far along, and so my condition to to being involved was do you mind to come to the united states and, and let's try to make 
connection with New York City in particular. And my thought for that was that it's not only about the Italian young people, it's also about Italians that are here to not forget where you came from and to help, to activate, to start the conversation so that we can make a change because they need a voice. So the film is part of that, but it doesn't stop there. It has to go beyond. So that's part of why having the premiere in New York City today and having all of you here is so important and you yes. answering questions and <laughs> telling about all your awards. Yes. yes. I was supposed to go to w Madrid yeah. and that, that didn't happen, but she won She's the very busy. <laughs> <laughs> I asked that we showed it in, we can meet in London or in yeah. Paris, but uh, I, I should, Next you, should time. you should come Next in time. Italy. <laughs> uh, at, at another presentation in Italy, we will have another in Bologna at university. So now you can see it here in USA is uh, on iTunes and uh, Google. So if you can, you can spread the voice <laughs> and in Italy we are on Netflix so um, I think we, we are wonderful there are credentials to connect online to our Wi-Fi network why don't you post the status and invite your friends to see the movie either on Netflix in Italy or Google or um, iTunes do it consider <laughs> doing it <laughs> I have two main questions and I hope I'm not gonna end up lynched by this crowd that is apparently very sympathetic towards you and I'm one of them, some 25 years later. Um, and I was wondering um, about there is a narrative basically of pessimism, negativity, and sadness. And I'm not saying that is not justified. When I left for the US in 1990, uh, there were, granted, there were fewer, much fewer people that would start an experience like that. I think I was the only one in my graduating year from the University of Parma. Um, but I was full of excitement. I really wanted it. The idea that I would come to a great public university in America like University of Virginia and live in a campus that seemed dropped from a film, and then Stanford, and they were paying me. Um, I, love my, my, I love my village, 4,000 people. Um, that sentence about Pavese, I must have read it a hundred times per night before going to bed. So I have a very strong connection with my village. 4,000 people and 12,000 pigs when I was growing up. <laughs> and that was fine. Um, but I felt also in the people that shared my experience studying different things, that there was this sense of excitement, of also on some level of adventure and um, gratitude, all in all, to life, to wherever you want to be grateful because you were given a chance to explore, to go beyond um, your little bell tower to Campanile. Um, whereas I didn't hear anybody in the film um, talking about this aspect. It's not a criticism to you, because maybe it's, it's really changed. When I left, people who left made a deliberate choice that, of course, was also open to going back, because we know there are jets that go back and forth. But the idea was to me to explore possibilities of career in this country. Whereas I don't hear that in your guest. And I wanted to know whether it was a narrative choice that you made or whether you haven't met one single person that spoke about her or his experience abroad in the terms that I've used. Well, um I, um, I follow um, a path about the frustration they, they felt when they choose to, to move abroad. So, um, of course, they, are, they feel satisfied, they are realized uh, this is an, an adventure, especially maybe New York City, most of all. Um, and also the people in the fish market are having a great time. <laughs> yes, also. Uh, in fact, uh, there are a lot of funny moments uh, uh, but I won't uh, especially follow this path of, uh, of frustration, just to make understand that uh, today is not, uh, of course, a deliberate choice. They have, mm, I, uh, it's hard to say that, but there is no freedom. Oh, if you go, ab you go abroad, or uh, what do you do? You have to do many sacrifices, as Chiara said, uh, a lot, as I'm doing maybe in Italy to, to do my job. And so, um, also, uh, I'm, I've noted that uh, there is a sort of 
obsession today about the research of job that uh, uh, fully um, uh, that I think that uh, for a young people, you have to to be happy. You have to be free of uh, put uh, in your priorities also other things that, uh, and not only the job, the research of job. But if you <laughs> you have to survive. So today there is a uh, this. Uh, it's, it's quite impossible also to um, make something for your country because there is also a sense of guilty uh, in uh, abandon uh, your country that is uh, declining. So there are a lot of feelings that uh, I, I would like to um, underline. Then, of course, the satisfaction of uh, having a career here. I don't know. I think the three segments that you pick with the politicians were perfect. You, you don't need to anything, add anything else to the political situation of Italy. They had very different viewpoints. Monti didn't seem to have a viewpoint, because he was silent on that. Um, and so that was perfect, because it really created the political, social atmosphere that surrounds this choice. And to tell you that I, I saw this evolution, because I go back all the time, and when I first left, to come here, I would see kids from my village, they would come see me, ask me for advice. And I would strongly encourage them, if you can, continue your career here. There are so many beautiful things that you can do. And for the past nine, ten years, I've not been able to tell them the same thing. I, I feel myself forced to tell them, if you can find a way, if you know what you want to do, if you're strongly motivated, go. So it's, it's a sad uh, note as background. No, 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 you're not no, supposed to. No, yes, because I, I don't know what to say when, yes, I just made this film to, trying to understand uh, what to say. M many people ask me, but what, you, what do you want to do? You want to stay, you want to go abroad? Uh, for now I'm staying because I'm uh, testarda, come si dice? So, so I want to have my place in Italy. I'm trying. Question, but you, know, you, you answered so brilliantly that you passed. And I think people in the audience have questions for oh, Brunella and Beth. Um, just, just one. Uh, I want to ask my protagonist, uh, how uh, about seeing yourself three years later? Uh -huh. It's actually been quite challenging to see myself on the screen, almost like an emotional, because I came here as an actress. I've been studying uh, communication and public relations in Rome. I graduated, and by my choice, I came to New York. I was excited. All my parents were sad, and my family was like, where are you going? I'm supposed to be here for six months. And in six months, my life changed after I came here to study with acting coach and a producer fell in love with my work, and they offered to sponsor me, and I got an artist visa. So for me, it was really like an escalating, and it was amazing. But then, you know, after you got the visa and everything, excitement, then to find jobs as an actress was really difficult. I don't look Italian. I'm blonde with blue eyes. <laughs> so I go in the room, and they're like, oh, American or European. And then I, I talk, and I'm like, oh, Italian. That's an Italian accent. So it was. Um, that's because I have an American boyfriend. Maybe that's why. <laughs> but anyway, so, you know, it's very difficult. and. Two years and a half ago, I founded my production company. So I stepped on the other side of the camera. I'm a director as well. I'm a filmmaker, editor. And I started doing documentary and commercials and this kind of job. So I'm doing both. But that's what pays my bill, not the acting job that I still pursue and I'm, because I'm stubborn too. But uh, I do both. So it's been quite a challenge to see myself, even if it's just three years, so many things have changed. Like I was a little baby. Alessia, my name is Alessia. Alessia Gatti. Yes, Alessia Gatti. Mm -hmm. I'm from Fano, from Marche. My grandmother still sends me one letter a week because <laughs> she says she's too busy now, so she can send me two, two letters a week. But she still does. She follows me everywhere I moved. I moved 10 times in the first year when I was in New York, and she was following me, like Harry Potter or the letters. That's Thank my you grandma. Thank for, for providing this beacon of life. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> Do you have other questions? 
I thought there would be millions of questions. Yes, but they are all surprised. I don't have a question. Would you like to we should have kept the actors for uh, for last. She's too <laughs> brilliant talking. Uh, to me, it was uh, basically the same. I mean, um, seeing myself three years ago, I feel like I uh, I kept going on the on the same path. But so many things happened in in, in the meantime. It's like uh, here in uh, in New York, the 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 time is a is a different pace if compared to anywhere else. And uh, I also have another baby in the meantime. She's. Uh, <laughs> She's uh, 19 months, and uh, I opened another company, and I'm also involved in another activity since when uh, we met last time, together with that activity. So, too many things. You want to come back to Italy? <laughs> Not for the yesterday? next four years. <laughs> this is, thank you, Matteo. This, this but I, I want to add that they, they maintain, they, they don't say that, but you maintain connection with Italy. You have to say yes, this all the time. All the time, and also Alessia, you come back uh, often. Yes, and you you trying to work also with Italy. Uh, I, no, I, I, I do work with Italy too. And when I wake up at 7 a.m., I'm already late by three four hours. I'm already inundated by email and messages. So, but no, for now I my place is here. And. Matteo, so thank you for providing yet another beacon of light and hope and careers that start to shape up. Dov'è, Chiara? Sisha. But we did quite cause. How your experience changed in your the in this food year. is always. <laughs> yeah, I also have a baby, so the perspective changes a little bit. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, and that's when I'm like, I should really go back to Italy now because we have a better system for kids and uh, school and here it's so expensive and all that. But um, yeah, I mean, I uh, got married with an American guy, got a baby. I'm very much here. Um, I decided to stay for now, but I'm always dreaming of going back to Bologna and sometimes I collaborate with uh, like trying to get like museums to use actually more technology in Italy, like potentially. And you know, like the Ministero dei Beni Culturali says we want to have a digital museum or whatever. And I, you know, at some point I'm like, maybe in five or six or 10 years, uh, I'll be able to uh, do something there. Um, but um, I stay positive because I think honestly, the most important thing, which is uh, what attracted me so much here in the US was the positivity of people and making sure that, um, you know, you know that things are possible. Um, and uh, uh, that's what, what really brings us all together and makes make sure that uh, we can really make a difference. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Also, do, doing uh, doing this documentary and the success we we reached also make me stay positive. I've also uh, founded a company in Puglia, in south of Italy, thanks to a grant that I received after uh, doing uh, this. Was it an Italian grant or an American grant? No, an, Ita an Italian. Oh, yeah. Yes, so one of the rare <laughs> grant for young people. Uh, and we won that uh, we, thanks to the idea of the web series after that. And so we started this company and I'm trying to be also a director and a CEO. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> it's very difficult, but... Uh, I think some of the suggestions that were coming is that probably when you move, you, you not only change country, but you have to change your, your form of mind and think outside the box of the things that you always thought you would be doing. So that's a great mental exercise yes. that you guys are all doing very well. Yeah. Um, yes, sir. Well, so how many of your protagonists have returned to Italy? Good question. Uh, actually, the question for the people in the library is how many of your protagonists have returned to Italy? Actually, just two. The two guys who stayed in Norway, the two guys from Rome. Mm -hmm. They wa they really wanted to come back, uh, and 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 they they are now uh, they have opened a bed and breakfast in Rome, and they 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 are really yes they're really bravi. <laughs> and there is a question regarding the kinds of job. Obviously, we saw that 
and rightly so, you interviewed people from all walks of life, people mm -hmm. with univer advanced university degrees, people who did not have particular uh, education uh, in all over Europe and the US. Uh, and there is a difference, obviously, between these choices. People like Chiara, people like, like them, that had a project, a plan, um, work probably harder to make it come true. And I understand that if somebody is stuck, even people with university degrees in this country that do not find anything else that is not waiting tables, I can understand that in the long run, after they do it for two and three years, it pays the bills, sometimes it pays them handsomely, but is that the path that they want to walk, um, having left their country behind? Just questions. Yeah, I, w I want to, to put uh, the mo most um, diversity, um, di diverse experiences. Also, people that just uh, uh, feel that uh, in Italy they were stuck in a, you know, in a fixed uh, reality. That the reality that uh, doesn't change in anything. So they just try to do something abroad, also without a real uh, project. Uh, but in a certain way, they do something abroad. So is it true, or is it my uh, malignant impression that there are some of these uh, young people that do when they're abroad jobs that they would never take when they're in Italy? Yes, also. Yeah, yeah. Um, because maybe they say that. Um, also doing a, a not uh, specialized work, let's call this this way, you you receive a pay, a normal pay, and you have contribution. And contribution is a big uh, issue today in Italy because uh, yesterday I was reading that uh, in Italy people from 80, they will sure not have a contribution. A contribution in a pension. A pension. So, uh, <laughs> you know, also doing a, a not specialized, a not skilled work abroad, you can have a... And they can learn language. the language if they and want. they can learn the language. Should. Sir. I just want to say that Italy should be very proud of the Italians that you are sending over here, because speaking of film and being in Greenwich Village, I'll turn this way so you can see. Thank it. you. To, uh, we will have a Greenwich Village Film Festival, and it's because of two Italians, Alessia and Antonio, that we had a Greenwich Village Film Festival last year for the first time. I've lived here 43 years. I didn't think of it. And we will have another one this fall, and it is because of these two Italians. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. You mean How do you deliver this message that you're leaving and it's a good cause and it's a smart thing to do to your mama? Yes. And then they get their degrees and nothing yeah. happens. And nothing yeah. Happens. I mean, they have bath you have <laughs> you would know better than You're me. American I mean, I, it's a very good question because I do think it has to start with with uh, you know the the older generations and Italy in particular because the political system yeah. is geared towards towards that already um, and there needs to be leadership starting obviously in in the homes because it's just like here in New York City you want to get your kid into the best you know middle school you have to start uh, you know when they're not even born to, to do that so you know I think the mentality has to change um, from the from the parents side obviously to to put pressure on the government and their lo local politicians unfortunately it's not as transparent my in my experience I, I haven't dealt with educational issues necessarily but it's not as transparent as it is here and there's not a lot of accountability 
um, yet. So I do think more pressure from the local uh, people will certainly help. Thank you. We have time for one more question. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I'll take your two. <laughs> <laughs> so why do you think if there is any reason uh, that Italian, not Italians, but Italy and Italy, Italian politicians are kind of pushing away this, um, I don't know, ability to invest money in the arts, which is really something important? Yes. If, if there is a possibility that they do something, no, you're... <laughs> it's like, uh, I don't know, of uh, course, because I'm not a uh, politician. I, I know that this is to give a question that to answer a question that the politicians should yes. be answering, but it, it's a very important very question to ask. Yes. And a, a country with the cultural patrimony that we have should really be using that massively for economic purposes. We haven't done it so far. You see, also the archaeologists. Yeah. I, I interviewed also other archaeologists, I, uh, Italian archaeologists. Uh, we shooted about them in Middle East. The Italian archaeologists in the Middle East, and I met uh, another team of Italian archaeologists here in Saint Louis. <laughs> no, the, the case of the archaeologists is very, very remarkable because you associate ancient history much more to Italy than to any other country, probably. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's part of the uh, after-war agreements with the countries in the Middle East. Very skilled. Italy is very skilled and very skilled. In fact, mm -hmm. but they don't the have uh, either a category, a protected category in Italy, you know. They provide preparation, they provide uh, the education that they need, the, the training, and then they're not able to employ them. I said that that was the last question, but I saw uh, my friend Teresa Fiore there, and being Italian, we are nepotists, so she's... <laughs> it's true. And if I were a Renaissance Pope, the first cardinal I would appoint would be my nipote, Teresa Fiore. <laughs> All kidding aside, Teresa Fiore is the chair of the Inserra Chair for Italian and Italian-American Studies at Montclair. She's doing a fantastic job uh, promoting Italian culture and does all sorts of other things. If you have never heard of her, it's because you've never visited the website. Take a look. It's not too far. Teresa. Oh, my God. Meritocracy exists here, I guess. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I know that uh, uh, many Italians who make a lot of things uh, to promote it, Italian culture and any other things, and the government in Italy don't know about them, mm, don't care about uh, all the Italians abroad doing these amazing things. And what I think is that uh, 
they should know and they should um, val valorize, uh, value, value their presence abroad. So not for their coming back, but to making this connection, maybe to help an American producer who want to invest, uh, creating the, and favorite this connection. I don't know how, of course, but uh, what I note is that they, they don't care about how many Italians abroad and what they do, and uh, oh, that they are a resource for Italy, you know. Thank you. I think with these messages that Italians abroad, people like whose stories we saw tonight are a resource for Italy, and Italy should take note and understand what's going on and really value them better and incorporate them in the productive fabric of the country. Um, Matteo Cerri Cement. And then, as a further proof, as if you needed one, of the entrepreneurial system of this generation of Italians coming abroad, uh, Matteo, in the short range of time in which there was the film projected, arranged for a reception. There's going to be upstairs. Ooh. It's all... <laughs> pizza. But don't say pizza with that expression, Matteo. Pizza is great. Pizza. <laughs> so, please thank once more Brunella Fili, director. Thank you. Thank you very much. And Betty Santo, executive producer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stefano. Thank you.